Hey, what's up? This is Brian Pfeiffer, the owner of VegasVIPServices.com. And today I'm going to talk to you guys about bottle service in Las Vegas. Now, if you guys are familiar with my channels, uh, I have several on YouTube. Uh, my kind of my claim to my fame video, my first video ever was a bit video on bottle service. So this is kind of like the uh, follow-up video to that. And I'm going to kind of maybe condense it a little bit, make it a little shorter. Um, I pretty much know all the questions that people ask every day because I sell a lot of bottle service, 75 to 100 groups a weekend, uh, book with us. And uh, pretty much I hear the same questions over and over again. Now, if you're a new person to bottle service, this is going to be a great video and very helpful. If you bought bottle service in the past, there might be a few things you pick up in this video. But for the most part, it's probably going to be a lot of questions you already know the answers to. So let's get started. What exactly is bottle service? Okay, people always ask me this question if they've never been to a club or whatever. You always see the tables all around the clubs. Well, generally people are buying what's called bottle service or some people call it table service. And what they're doing is they're paying an overinflated price for bottle service or a minimum spend, they call it. We'll talk about more of that later. And But they're basically just paying for the real estate, okay? In order to get a table in the nightclub, you have to agree to a minimum spend, all right? If, uh, if you don't know what a minimum spend is, basically it's just an agreed amount, agreed amount that you are going to spend on alcohol. And if you're at a pool, uh, it usually composes of like alcohol and uh, food as well. Okay? So that's what bottle service is. You're just paying for the real estate in the club. And obviously, as you get closer to the DJ, uh, you're going to pay more for the tables. Okay? The better tables are going to cost more money, going to have a higher minimum. All right? So that is, um, you know, basically a minimum spend. Uh, people always ask, you know, this is a very common question. It says like $1,000 for a balcony table, for example. Well, do they, they're asking, do I have to buy bottles on top of that? No. What a minimum spend is, you're agreeing to spend $1,000 on alcohol in order to get the table. Okay, so it's called a minimum spend for a reason because you're agreeing to spend that amount is your minimum you you're need to spend in order to get the table. Okay, so the question number three I get a lot is... Um, um, how does bottle service in Las Vegas work? Well, it pretty much works like that. You just agree to a minimum spend and you get a table. Now, there are a few places in Vegas that have um, a few a little bit differently that you basically pay like a rental fee and then you get the bottles for cheaper, okay? The only three places that I can think of that are like that are pools and then one of them is at the, uh, the Flamingo, another one's the Venus Pool, and another one's at Morea Beach Club. Other than that, all the places we work with, all the pool parties, all the nightclubs, it's basically just the minimum spend, and you get a table. You agree to a minimum spend to get a table, and the higher, the, the better the table, the higher the minimum spend. Okay, you're not going to pay any rental fee, and you know you don't have to buy any bottles on top. You just have to agree to spend that much on booze. All right. Question number four. Um, people ask like what the uh, influences the cost of tables. Well, there's a lot of things. Okay, the day of the week can make a difference. The DJ obviously can make a difference if it's a really expensive. You know, brand name DJ like a Tiesto that's going to be there on a Saturday. Of course, the tables are going to be a lot more. Now, if it's a DJ nobody that nobody's ever heard of and it's on like a Monday night, well, then maybe the bottle service is going to be a little bit, a little bit less. We may even offer some kind of bottle packages and whatnot to get people in the door. Um, so that's generally kind of what influences the cost of the table. Of course, the logistics in the club matter as well. If you're a table near the DJ, that's going to be typically more expensive. On the dance floor, more expensive. The tables all the way in the back or up on the balcony or even outside. If it's a nightclub, uh, are going to be a lot less expensive. Okay. Uh, the other weekend, there was a big event in town with Little Wayne. And of course, the tables you know, up near the DJ were probably fifteen dollars or $20,000 for a minimum spend. And the ones out way in the back and the cabanas at uh, AU Day Club that's connected to the nightclub, those are probably like a $1,000 minimum. Okay. That just gives you a little bit of an idea. Let's talk about the music genres of the nightclubs in Las Vegas. Um, you're going to have two basic music genres. There's going to be the hip-hop clubs, and then there's going to be the EDM clubs. There's also some clubs that play what's called open format, which is a combination of Latin, Top 40, hip-hop, EDM. They kind of mix everything up, okay? Now, the main EDM clubs are going to be your big-name DJs. You're going to see the Cascades of the world, uh, the David Guetta's of the world, John Summit's of the world, Tiesto's of the world. Those are going to be like your EDM clubs, okay? Stevie Aoki, another one. And then there's also going to be... Um, the hip hop venues, okay, that's what typically we're going to find like a performer, okay, maybe you'll see like a two chains, or um, you know, recently they had a Chris Brown not too long ago, um, some big, you know, Lil Wayne, obviously, hip hop artist, ludicrous hip hop artist. Those are going to be like where the, the DJ mainly is going to spin hip hop throughout the night, and then around you know, 2 30 in the morning um, at the nightclubs, and maybe around 3 30 in the afternoon at the pool parties, the artists will come on and play perform for like a half hour. And uh, that's the show, okay? That's the um, genres. Now, there is another kind of another genre called Tech House. Um, it's not real popular out here in Las Vegas. Uh, generally, the Tech House DJs are only going to get booked occasionally on like a festival, like the Art of the Wild Festival at, at the, uh, the Wind Nightlife venues, or maybe like the After Hours venue out here called uh, Ego. But typically, they've found over the years that they just don't draw enough people that spend money to justify their cost. 
um, at the nightclubs out here, unfortunately. You know, I go to Miami, uh, most of the DJs at the nightclubs are, are going to be tech house and a club space, etc. So it's just a little bit different environment, a little different city. Uh, number six, um, large events and day of the week. Okay, say you have, um, you know, obviously a big event like a Chris Brown or a Little Wayne and it's going to be like a holiday weekend, like you have like a fight or a, um, you know, some kind of uh, uh, big event going on, at maybe a football game, Raiders Stadium. Golden Knights isn't what I would consider like a big event, but um, there's, you know, generally always like some kind of UFC fight, could be Mexican Independence, could be Memorial Day. There are a lot of big weekends out here in Vegas, okay? So those weekends, you can plan on paying a little bit more higher minimums, and generally the pricing is going to be higher across the board, okay? Sometimes even jack up the bottle prices on the menu, okay? That's common out here. You'll see that every once in a while. I've noticed now some of the Tau Group menus are going to, like, digital menus. You know why they do that? So now they can have variable pricing on those holiday weekends when the demand's high, okay? So um, I, XS used to do it with two different printed versions um, of their menus, but I think they've kind of gone away from that a little bit now. So... Uh, people have asked me before, what is a handshake, okay? Generally, if you book a table, like for example, online, you book a uh, back wall table at XS. Let's just give it an example here. And the XS tables, um, there's a bunch of back walls. Now, there's several of those tables that have like a beam in front of them that wouldn't be considered very good tables. Now, if you book online without a VIP host, okay, more than likely you're probably going to get one of those crappy tables, okay, because nobody's making commission on your table, okay? Now, if you wanted to... <clears throat> say guarantee one of the best tables with a great view, we do what's called like a handshake, okay? Uh, we also call it a podium tip. <clears throat> you can call it a grease. You can call it whatever you want. Basically, it's just a, a cash tip to the podium in order to get a uh, preferred location, okay? Sometimes we do a cash tip for a lower minimum. Sometimes we do a cash tip for a better table. Some nights, uh, if it's big enough and high enough demand, you have to do a cash tip just to get a table, okay? So that's what, called, that's what a podium tip is or a handshake is. Um, Dre's has a system in place where you can tip the podium to get a lower minimum. Like, for example, the table is a $2,000 minimum. If you can't afford that with the tip and tax, that's around $2,800. You maybe want to tip the podium uh, $300. That'll drop the minimum by $500. Your total out the door price then drops with the tip and tax to around twenty four hundred, roughly about a four hundred dollars savings. Or you can tip five hundred to the podium, and that uh, will drop your minimum by a thousand. So you're at a thousand dollar minimum, five hundred dollar podium tip. You pay, still pay tip and tax on the minimum. Your total comes to about eighteen fifty. Okay, so that's almost a thousand dollars. It's about eight hundred some dollars less than the uh, the original deal at two thousand. Okay, that that's the podium tip system. Um, People are asking about like you know what what's the advantage of buying a, bo a bottle service table versus buying drinks? Well, there's quite a bit of advantages. Obviously, you have a place to hang out and you know set up shop for the whole night. For guys trying to meet girls, it's way better. For girls trying to meet guys, it's obviously way better for that than that. The drink prices out here in Las Vegas are around twenty five dollars a piece. Okay, you know roughly you get twenty two drinks in you know a bottle. Uh, you know depending on how stiff you pour them. Sometimes these Vegas waitresses pour them really stiff. Um, <laughs> might get a few less than that. But let's just say you get twenty five. Um, 25 drink or 22 drinks out of a, a bottle at $25 a drink. So you go 22 times 25, and just on buying drinks, you're at around 550. Okay. Now most of the bottles at some of the clubs are around, you know, and it could be as low as 500 at some of the places. Uh, most of them are closer to around like 800 or 900 even. So it is just a little bit more to get bottle service if you're going to drink that many drinks. Um, you know, say you got a big group of like guys, say 10 guys or whatever. Each guy buys three drinks. Well, that's 30 drinks. You might as well just potentially get a $1,000 minimum table and get a table so you can set up shop, you can get a bottle, and you got a place to hang out all night, okay? So that's kind of how it works with, uh, you know, the bottle service and the drinks. People ask me once in a while what a bottle package is. Well, generally some of the clubs, uh, usually the older clubs and sometimes on off nights, uh, the clubs will offer what's uh, called a bottle package. And what it is is basically they give us a deal to get people in the door. Um, basically, it's going to be a couple of bottles typically for less than the cost of retail. Uh a good example is on some Sunday nights and some Wednesday nights at Marquee, uh, two bottles would normally run you about $2,800, okay, about $900 plus the tip and tax. All that comes out to around $2,800, and I can do a bottle package typically for a couple of bottles uh, for around $1,650. So it's you know almost $1,000 off, okay? That's a good example of a bottle package. Um, <clears throat> sometimes I get asked about IDs, the security, the dress code. Everywhere's a little bit different depending on the uh, the ownership of the the venue. Okay, the towel group used to be really strict with you know the, the the security checks and whatnot. They've loosened up now. You pretty much just got to walk by a metal detector. They might wand you down and you walk in. They're not searching your pockets or anything like that anymore. You go over to the Win, which is Excess Encore Beach and Encore Beach at night. They're going to dig into your pockets. They're going to search you down pretty hard. Okay, so they're a little bit different over there. Uh, guys from out of town, uh, I run into this lot. 
a lot of times they don't take those foreign IDs. So you're going to want to bring your passport out, even though you're worried about losing it. Most people are. You're going to want to make sure you bring those uh, I passports out with you. I've seen guys show up and think they got some on their phone. Maybe that works in Europe, but that doesn't work here. Okay, you actually have to have the physical passport or the physical ID with you on the site. Um, they're pretty strict about it here. These are casinos, and they're most of the time they're casino-operated security, and uh, they're, they're pretty difficult. Let's just say that. you you got to be come proper on that. And dress code, guys. Um, I do have, um, you know, on the link below, you can click on... On uh, the website here, I do have a whole section on dress code. Uh, you got some pictures and whatnot, but uh, you know, come dress to impress at the at the nightclubs, especially. Um, you know, ladies, you can pretty much get away with what you want. Uh, guys, you're going to want to wear like you know, nice pants, nice shoes, nice shirt. You know, this, these are classy places out here in Las Vegas, so you know, come dressed apart. Um, you know, make sure the ladies bring some cover ups for the when you leave the pool and whatnot. You don't want to be walking through the casinos with uh, you know your bikini on and whatnot. So that's important. Um, Let's talk about like the time of arrival when you come to the club. Uh, a lot of times um, I'm on a tight schedule and I'm meeting my customers. You know, I say I'm going to be there at 1030. I'm going to be there at 1030. Okay. And if you're late, well, I'll have it probably arranged where you can be late and I'll tell you what to do, give you instructions. But uh, it's important that if you want to get walked in, especially later in the night when it's like around midnight and it's super busy at these clubs and there's sometimes a big line, um, you know, you follow the instructions and you make sure you show up on time. There's going to be a lot of traffic around Vegas at all times on the busy weekends, especially. And we got the F1 construction coming up. That's always going to be a problem. So, you know, just make sure you give yourself enough time. Maybe plan on having dinner at the same casino where the club is you're going. And that way, when you're done with dinner, you can just walk over. There's no worries about traffic or anything like that. So... Those are some of the things I would recommend as far as you know being on time. I run a tight ship. Um, my partner runs a tight ship, and you know if you're late, we can still probably make it happen. But you know, obviously, we'd like to give you that full service and get you guys walked in and everything. Um, the clubs all operate on what's called a supply and demand system. Okay, uh, generally on bigger nights, uh, you know the prices are going to go up, up, up as we get closer to the date, and even on the night of, they might go through the roof. Okay, um, rarely do I have a situation where you know we might get bumped from you know a table that we agreed upon. It does happen, but probably only happened to me a couple times in the last like five or ten years. It's very rare. So most of the time, I guarantee what you know what we promise. We do some kind of deposit, and you're locked in. But just keep in mind that um, you know if there is a situation where a customer comes in and says, "Hey, I got twenty grand. I just want to you know blackjack whatever, and I want this table. I'm paying this much for it, and you're at five thousand. There's a possibility we could get bumped. Okay, that that does happen on occasion out here. It's very rare, but it does happen. So just understand it is a supply and demand system always. Um, you know, pretty much it's fixed in stone when you work with me, but you know, every once in a while we do run into an issue like that. Um, how many people per table? That's another question I get a lot. Uh, you know, generally you can kind of make this assumption around four to five people per bottle. So if you buy a, uh, you have a group of 10, you're probably going to need at least a two bottle table to get everybody in. That's kind of a rule of thumb. Um, you know, if you know you're obviously going to spend a lot more than that, you might want to just go ahead and, you know, do a $2,500 min or a $3,500 minimum to get a better table. Okay. Um, so Generally, rule of thumb, five, you know, five people per bottle. You know, a lot of the tables at some of the older clubs don't hold more than about 10 or 12 people. Um, some of the newer clubs are built better, and they, you know, have bigger tables. You can put 15 or 20 on those tables. Um, it's a case-by-case -case basis. So if you've got questions on how many people per table and which tables are going to fit your group, uh, let me know. Worst case scenario, maybe we have to get two tables, put them side by side. That happens fairly often. Um, how do guests get in if they arrive late? I get this question a lot. People are so worried about their friends coming late, you know, they, they oversleep or they go to the pool, get wasted, and they need to take a nap. It's easy out here, okay? It's not a problem. All you got to do is give people the name of the table, which typically is the customer name, and then the table number once I get it on the night of it. The people can show up later. They can just say your name and the table number, and they'll get right in. They get a slip written up, and they walk right in. You don't have to go out to the front and get them. <laughs> They're going to get in. These systems are designed for latecomers and stragglers. We, ha we deal with it every single weekend, and there's no need to come out. You just got to give them a name and table number. If you want, I can even send you a table map, so you can send that to your, your, your late friends, and they can see the, where the table is in the club, and just get right in and walk to your table. Now, if they show up at prime time when it's super busy, they might have to wait a little bit. That's just the way it is. They show up late. That's kind of their own fault. It is what it is. They're going to get in. Just tell them to be patient. Every once in a while, we have a capacity issue at these clubs when, like, say, John Summit's at Live Beach or Live, and, you know, they're going to have to wait. Okay, they show up at 1230 when the club's at capacity. That's the rules. You can't <laughs> got to let people out before you can let people in. That's just the way it goes. So just keep that in mind uh, for the latecomers and whatnot. Um, people always ask how you get a bottle service presentation. That's, you know, one of those things that's kind of up to the waitresses. 
Um, you know, obviously, if you're a big customer and you're buying like a 10K table or, uh, you know, 8K table or something like that, I can arrange a walk-in and a presentation right off the bat. Now, if you're a smaller customer, say you're at like a 2K minimum, uh, it may be difficult to get a bottle service presentation, especially on like a really busy night at some of these clubs. The waitresses are really stacked and they got, you know, multiple tables going on. They sometimes have to go help out on other tables for the other customers' bottle presentations for the bigger customers. And um, they may require you to order like a bottle of champagne or, you know, $2,000 all at once in order to get a presentation, okay? It's never guaranteed. Now, generally, if you come early and you want to get a, a presentation for like the bachelorette or the birthday person or whatever, and you ask the waitress nice, nicely, tell them, you know, what's going on, she may be able to bring out a sign of some sort or some lights and whatnot and make it kind of special, okay? But I would recommend doing that earlier in the night, get there maybe 10, 30, 11 o'clock before the big customers start rolling in because that makes things a lot more difficult for the waitresses as the night goes on. Obviously, you spend money on champagne and whatnot, they're going to give you a light show or a, a bottle display. That's just kind of how it works, all right? And one other question I get is how to find girls. Uh, if you're guys, uh, typically girls don't really ask me how to find guys. I don't think it's too hard out here to find guys. But as far as finding girls, um, there's a couple different ways. Okay, number one, I do offer like an atmosphere model service, and it's very popular these days. Actually, several several atmosphere models a weekend I get I book out for my customers. Basically, you're just paying basically hundred dollars an hour to the girls, and they come and hang out at your table. It's a four hour minimum. Girls like to travel in groups of two or more, and you got two pretty girls, three pretty girls, whatever, hanging out at your table all night, talking to the guys that can maybe help your cause of getting other girls to the table. If you girls can even walk around meet some other girls for you, bring them to the table. Um, that's the atmosphere model service. Now, if um, you don't want to do the atmosphere models, you want to kind of just play your uh, play your hand with what you get in your table, well, there's a girl guy at the club. Now, say you got a table all the way in the back or outside at excess or something. It's not a great table. The girl guy is probably not going to want to bring girls to your table. It just let's just be realistic. But you have a nicer table, maybe uh, a large third row or a dance floor, an upper dance floor at some of these clubs, well, I can bring over the girl guy who's in charge of, like, the promoter table. Okay, the promoter table is going to be where, you know, they bring all the prettiest girls in from the guest list. They let them hang out there, get them some free drinks and then throughout the night they disperse those girls to the, the, the higher paying customers and the better tables okay and generally that guy works for a tip I can introduce you to that guy um, he's going to be there at most of the nightclubs and some of the pool parties and you know they can bring you know bring girls to your table all night for a reasonable tip or whatever okay so that's one option and the other option is obviously just to get a table and use that table as leverage to walk around and just you know be I'm not saying be aggressive with girls but you can be um, a little bit more um, forward, if you will, in Las Vegas than you would be at your, maybe your hometown where you might be seeing these girls again, okay? There's a pretty high likelihood that any girl you walk up to in Las Vegas, you'll probably never see again. So you might as well be a little bit aggressive and walk up to her and be a little forward and say, hey, listen, you want to come by my table and have a drink? What's the worst they're going to say? No? Okay, boom, I'm never going to see you again. Now, if you do that in your hometown and you walk up to a girl and say, uh, you know, ask her to come to your table and you get rejected, well, you're probably going to see that girl again, okay? That's, that's a little bit more of a different story. So just keep that in mind when you're in Las Vegas. Um, that's what I would recommend is, you know, just being a little bit more forward than you maybe would in your hometown. And as far as like the tables go, um, to get something reserved with me, um, everything requires a deposit with my business. I don't do anything without a deposit these days. Um, just about every club requires a deposit. Back in the day, we did stuff without a deposit. We had so many no-shows. It was just crazy. Uh, now that we do deposits, we have a lot more people that actually show up and show up on time, etc. I do offer like a prepayment service. I got guys I was dealing with today from Australia. They're sending me a wire. Um, and there's other guys, um, they're, they're sending me uh, several big Venmos. Um, they're doing like a $15,000 package with us. The reason why we do that sometimes is because my credit cards, are, I'm, I'm local, they always go through. Okay, never had an issue with a credit card in Las Vegas with any of my credit cards. Well, a lot of times when you come from out of the country or you come from Canada especially um, and you go to run a credit card on one of these cards, you get fraud blocked. Okay, and then you got to go deal with going into the back. You maybe have to put in a PIN number. You have to call the credit card company. You can waste a half hour to an hour. I've seen it over an hour about people wasted dealing with a credit card issue. So we can avoid that, all that, if you're coming from out of town and uh, we can do prepayments. Um, I'm a licensed independent host. I actually have a Nevada gaming license, um, you know, insured, bonded, everything. So I'm contracted with every club. You don't have to worry about your stuff getting uh, taken here. I make sure that you, you know, everything with your promise, you get delivered on and uh, you avoid some of those issues. Okay, so that's one thing we can do out here. Um, we do offer like packages and whatnot that include like dinner, limos, uh, strip clubs, nightclubs, men's shows uh, for the ladies. And we do tons of those. Okay, that's basically half my business. The other half of my business is just the bottle service tables. And, uh, you know, I'm here to help. So if you got questions for me, hopefully I answered a lot of them in this video. And uh, what I didn't get answered, go ahead and uh, make sure you hit me up on my cell. My number is 773-459-8133. That's my cell phone. Go ahead and hit that up and uh, shoot me a text. And I'll get on a call with you and answer any questions you might have. Get your table set up. I'm looking forward to working with you out here in Las Vegas with some bottle service. I'm Brian Pfeiffer. Let's talk soon. Bye.